Hey guys, it's Chris from Highline Guitars and you're watching another episode of From the Luthier's Workbench. In this episode, I am going to uh, reveal the results of a test that I recently completed on a new water-based clear coating product. So let's jump in and get started. The product that I tested isn't available on the market yet. It's currently, as I'm shooting this video, um, December of 2019. So by the time you watch the video, the product may in fact be available. Now this product is manufactured or going to be manufactured by a company called Createx. And if you're not familiar with who Createx is, I'll put a link in the description below so that you can go check out their product line. But in a nutshell, they make a variety of water-based products which can be uh, applied with either an airbrush or a spray gun. And they're really popular with people who do airbrush illustrations. And they can be applied to a variety of different surfaces like wood, metals, plastics, that sort of thing. So um, I wanted to try this product. Uh, originally, I'll give you a little bit of backstory on this. Uh, one of my viewers had suggested that I try a product called Scenix SSR, and this is a clear coat product that is sold by Createx. So I went to their website and did a quick check to see what this product was all about, and I was intrigued. It's a water-based clear coat, which they describe as being an industrial uh, grade product. Now, I don't really know exactly what that means, but I'm under the impression it means when it dries, it's going to be very hard and durable. And it's also, uh, resistant to the effects of UV sunlight, and that's a good thing. So, I had decided I would uh, try out this product and see if it might have a use as a clear coat for guitars. Now, to apply this product, they suggest using uh, their own uh, crosslinker, and you add a little bit of the crosslinker to the product and then spray it down. And what this crosslinker does is it helps it dry and cure very quickly. So theoretically, you could spray the product and roughly four hours later, it's going to be cured enough to where you could um, either mask it off and tape it or you could level sand and buff it out. And that was kind of the impression that I got for the product. Well, when I contacted Createx and asked them if I could get a sample of the Scenix SSR, they told me they were going to replace it with this new product. And so what they did was they sent me a sample of the new product. And they gave me a, uh, a gloss version of it as well as a matte. They also included, this is a specially formulated, um, I'd call it a reducer or a thinner. And what this does is it helps you to reduce the viscosity of the product so that you can spray it through whatever kind of spray equipment you have. And that's what I'm going to be testing. Now, uh, rather than actually spray it onto a guitar, I decided that I would spray it onto some scrap. And as luck would have it, I have some old ceiling fan blades that I uh, rescued from a ceiling fan that I replaced a couple of weeks ago. And the wood is, I'm not even sure what kind of wood it is, it's some type of plywood. But I figured instead of throwing it away, this would make a great surface in which to test products. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to test the gloss. And I'm looking for a couple of important features. I want to see how easy it is to spray, how fast it dries, how fast it cures, how smooth it lays out, and then once it's cured, I want to see how quickly and easily it is to level sand and buff, and then I want to see how scratch resistant the product is once it's cured. So uh, let's jump in and get going on this. For the purposes of this test, I decided to use the gloss formula, and that's going to be called uh, Createx 4050 UVLS, and UVLS stands for Ultraviolet Light Stabilized which means it's going to have not only the ability to seal and protect the underlying uh, color finishes, but it will also provide uh, protection from sunlight. And for the first few coats, I decided that I would reduce the product using their 4011 reducer thinner. And this would allow me to uh, run this product through my HVLP spray gun 
fitted with a 1.5 millimeter needle. Originally, I was planning to use my little LVLP detail gun. However, I decided to use my HVLP spray gun since that's what I typically use when spraying clear coats. Even after adding a small amount of the reducer thinner, I found that this product is still pretty thick. It's thicker than most of the other water-based clear coat products I've sprayed in the past. However, I found that with the one and a half millimeter needle on my spray gun, it did spray and lay out pretty nicely. Uh, nothing really unexpected here. As I was spraying this Createx clear coat product, I noticed a couple of behaviors which warrant some discussion. First of all, as I'm spraying the product, I noticed that it appeared to have a transparent milky white color cast. However, as the product dries, that milky white color cast disappears and it actually dries crystal clear. Another behavior I noticed was as I'm spraying it, it appears to have a slightly bumpy texture and that's only visible when the product uh, is still wet right after spraying it. It appears as though as it dries, the uh, Createx clear coat will shrink slightly and that sort of flattens out the surface and removes uh, the majority of that texture. And um, the other issue that that shrinkage could uh, lend to is if your surface isn't absolutely smooth, any surface texture, wood grain, uh, surface flaws, will show through your clear coat. And I sprayed about seven coats on this uh, piece of scrap wood, uh, this fan blade, and I could see the wood grain texture showing through all seven coats. So what I did was I went back and sanded the surface smooth with my random orbital sander and some thousand grit sandpaper. And now I'm going to spray a couple of additional coats. But this time, I think what I'm going to try is I'm going to spray the Createx without any of the uh, reducer added to it. And I'm going to change the needle on my spray gun from a 1.5 to a 2 millimeter and see if I can lay it down heavy enough to fill the texture and get a nice smooth surface. I ended up spraying about three final coats of the Createx gloss without any of the reducer thinner added to it. And despite how thick the product is, with the two millimeter needle in my spray gun, I really had no trouble spraying a nice, even consistent yet thick coat on the surface of my test piece. Since I didn't add that reducer thinner to the product, I knew it was going to take longer to dry, and as a result, I waited about 45 minutes to an hour before spraying each additional coat. And if you're wondering whether or not I did any scuff sanding between coats, I did not. I don't really feel it's necessary as long as you're spraying each coat within a couple of hours. After spraying the third coat, I let the finish cure overnight for about 12 hours. And then I came back and began the process of level sanding. Now the technique that I prefer to use is dry sanding. And I'll start with 3M216U P800 grit paper and I'll sand the surface level. Then I'll switch to Super Acelix sanding sheets, which I will sand from 800 all the way up to about 1500 grit. Of course, I realize a lot of people still like to wet sand, and so what I decided to do is I would dry sand half the board, and then I would wet sand the other half of the board. And to wet sand, what I used was Eagle Abrasive's P-grade sandpapers, starting with 800 grit and working my way up to 2000 grit. One of the advantages of this product, as it was described to me, is that it will cure faster. And I think that as far as dry sanding the finish, you could probably start that process within a few hours of spraying the final coat. However, with wet sanding, I really think you need to wait at least 48, maybe even up to 72 hours before you begin that process. 
after the level sanding was complete, it was off to the buffer, and I'm using two buffing wheels, one with Minzerna medium cut compound and the other with Minzerna extra fine uh, polishing compound. Now, I know this image looks kind of weird, but what you're looking at is a tree in my backyard as it is reflected off the surface after I've buffed it. And this uh, photo was taken on the side which was level sanded using a wet sanding technique. And then this is that same tree reflected on the side that was dry sanded. As you uh, can see, if you look closely, it is a little bit sharper. And while that difference may be very subtle, in person, the differences can be dramatic. Uh-oh, Houston, it looks like we got a problem. After I had finished buffing to a high gloss shine, I set this piece aside for a couple of days while I prepared two similar samples that I'm going to be using for further testing, and I'll explain more about that in a minute. But when I came back to this piece, I noticed the shine, the high gloss mirror-like shine, had mysteriously disappeared. Furthermore, the texture of the wood grain was now once again telegraphing up through the surface. So what had happened? Well, I can't say with absolute 100% uh, certainty, but I can theorize that what, what went wrong is that I leveled and buffed the surface too soon after spraying that final clear coat. As a result, the finish continued to cure and then shrank back, which reduced its uh, high gloss sheen as well as allowed that surface texture to once again appear in the surface. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a quick re-level and rebuff it, and hopefully it will remain a high gloss shine as I prepare for the next step in this test. I finished level sanding and buffing all three of my samples, so now I am finally ready to rate their performance. Now, the first thing you're going to notice when you look at these is that they all appear to have a slightly different uh, color cast to them. Uh, we sort of have a light, medium, and dark. And that has nothing to do with the clear coat finish that I'm testing. That has to do with the uh, wood substrate that I sprayed uh, these finishes onto. And they're, they're made out of all different kinds of woods. They're in different orientations. So as a result, the colors will look different. But that doesn't really matter because what I'm concerned about is the clarity of the finish, the quality of the gloss, and the scratch resistance. So the color of the wood isn't really going to have a, uh, an effect on that. So what I have here is this sample is solar res UV cured polyester gloss resin. And this is Crystallax bright tone instrument finish. And then this is the Createx UV LS finish. So what I'm most concerned about are these two finishes because they're both water-based finishes. But I included the polyester because polyester, it, it, it's really at the, at the top of the totem pole when it comes to finishes. It has the um, um, cl uh, best clarity. Uh, it, it has a, an incredible high gloss uh, shine when it's buffed out and by far the highest level of scratch resistance. But as I said before, this is a product that's difficult to work with. You've got to have knowledge, experience, and the right tools to be able to pull it off. And uh, for that reason, I'm more focused on water-based finishes because that's where a lot of people are starting to turn to when it comes to finishing their guitars. Okay, so as I just mentioned, I'm going to be rating these uh, by their performance in three categories. The clarity of the, the finish, the uh, quality of its high gloss shine, and then its scratch resistance. And in each of those categories, I'll be rating it from 1 to 10, 10 being the highest. And I'll tell you right now, the Solar Res is going to get a 10 in each category, so it's going to score a total of 30 points. Now, for these two products, the two water-based products, I'm going to start out by talking about the clarity and the quality of the shine. As far as the clarity is concerned, with water-based finishes, you typically have a polymer, which is dissolved into the carrier, and that's usually like an ethyl glycol uh, with water. And that uh, polymer can actually create a slight kind of milky haze to the finish. In fact, when I was spraying 
the Createx earlier, you saw how uh, strong that milky, hazy finish is. And typically with water-based finishes, if you apply them properly and allow them to dry correctly, that haze will disappear and it will turn clear. However, if you jump the gun and spray your coats too quickly in succession, you can trap that milky uh, finish. Now, Crystal Lax product, their Bright Tone, is very clear compared to other water-based clear coat products. I've found that you can spray this stuff really heavy and barely notice any sort of a hazy uh, cloudiness to the finish. Uh, the Createx is probably has the strongest level of that uh, milky blue haze that I've ever seen in a product. However, as I showed in, uh, earlier in comparison photos, that haze disappears as it dries. But once again, you've got to do it correctly or you can trap that haze in the finish. Since the uh, Crystal Lac is the clearest, I'm going to give this one a 9 for the clarity of the finish. It's not as clear as the polyester when it's wet, but it is still fairly clear, so it gets a 9. The Createx, however, since it goes down with such a strong uh, milky blue haze, I'm going to give it a 7. So, um, and that's only because there's that potential for that, that haze to get trapped if you spray too quickly. Now, as far as the quality of the shine, the uh, uh, Crystal Lac is very easy to level sand, buffs out beautifully, very easy to buff out. Same is true with the Createx. Now for the, um, the Crystal Lac, I'm gonna give it a score of about a nine. And that's because if you compare it to the 10 of the uh, Solar Res, and it's hard to see this stuff in, in these videos, but the, um, the quality of the shine of the Solar Res is incredible. It is glass smooth. And the uh, Crystal Lac comes close, but not quite as sharp. So it's going to get a 9. The um, Createx is just a hair below the Crystal Lac. So I'm going to give it an 8. And I think that that's pretty accurate representation of my interpretation of, of the shine. I've included some photos of each of these finishes in, in what I call the reflective test. So I doubt you're going to be able to see that much difference between them. However, um, I'm going to ask you to trust my, uh, my eyes on this and take my word for it. And my word is based on years of experience having sprayed just about every single clear coating product that's out on the market. So, you know, I can look at these and, and I can see right away the differences in the quality of shine between all three of them. For the scratch test, I used a coarse synthetic uh, scrubbing pad and placed a five pound weight on the top of it. And then I slid this combination all the way along the length of each of the boards. Well, the scratch test turned out pretty much as I had expected it would. The Solar Res has scratches on the surface, but they're really shallow, and that's why this one got a 10. The Crystal Lac and the Createx both have uh, scratches in them, and it is really tough to tell the difference, although I would say that all things being equal, I think think maybe the Createx, ah, boy, it's tough to say. I'm going to say they're both about the same. I, I really can't go out there and say that uh, one particular product is showing better scratch resistance than the other, because I think they're really close to being the same.
The polyester sample shows very little scratching. Uh, however, the Crystallac and the Createx are about the same, although it's kind of hard to tell in the Createx sample because of the color of the wood. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to give both of these about a seven as as to scratch resistance because you know this is definitely the top of the line and it's what I would love to see my water base products have but I don't think the chemistry is is quite there yet I totaled up the points and solar res polyester resin gets a perfect 30 points crystal X bright tone gets 25 points and Createx UBLS gets 22 points so uh, well, the obvious winner is solar res polyester, but as I said before, this is uh, not the product that I'm necessarily testing here. Uh, polyester resins are easily the hardest clear coating product on the market, and but they aren't a water-based product, and they aren't necessarily a product that's easy for people to use. It takes some experience and knowledge, the right equipment, to be successful with it, and Water-based products are really where the market is heading. And as this test has demonstrated, uh, the Crystal Lac Bright Tone, I think, is still probably at the very top. I don't know of any other water-based product that uh, comes close to what Crystal Lac Bright Tone uh, provides as a clear coat. I was really hopeful for the Createx, and the reason for that was because, as I said before, they sell a product called Scenix SSR, which when combined with the use of a crosslinker, cures rapidly. And it was um, uh, touted as having a, an industrial grade uh, finish and hardness level. So I was hoping for a product that I could spray in the morning and then in the evening level sand it and buff it out and be done. But as it turns out, in order to level sand and buff out this finish to the level that luthiers expect from a clear coat finish, it has to fully cure, and that means it needs to cure for several days. And uh, I ended up curing this exactly the same way as I cure my Crystal Lac products. I allowed one full 24-hour day per coat. So if I sprayed eight coats, that meant it had to rest for eight days before I could level sand and buff. So there was really no advantage there. And as far as the scratch resistance, I didn't really feel it was that significantly different from the Crystal Lac, not enough to warrant uh, switching brands. So uh, I'm going to stick with the Crystal Lac. And really, going forward in the future, the only way I will consider another product is if it can cure faster and has a higher level of scratch resistance and a better price point because that's really what it comes down to. And right now, nothing out on the market really matches the, the Crystal Lac yet. So um, we'll see what the future holds. And, you know, I would love to see uh, Crystal Lac uh, basically the same product it is now, but perhaps with a little bit better scratch resistance. Um, but I'll, I'll take what it, what it is right now. I'm, I'm happy with it, and it means I don't have to expose myself to toxic uh, flammable fumes, and plus it's easy to clean up. So um, I hope this video has been informative. I know for me it was educational. <laughs> it was a learning experience. I really uh, got to see truly what these products do in terms of their performance. And there were no major surprises, but I did get confirmation that uh, I've made the right choice uh, now and going forward. So um, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, post your comments down below, click the subscribe button if you don't already subscribe, make sure you click that little bell icon so you get notified every time I post a new video. And hopefully next week I'll be back uh, making videos more specifically about building guitars. So uh, until the next episode, take care and we'll see you soon.